Welcome to a Search podcast, The Yellow Editor. My name is Kate. I'm the communication manager of a Search. And today is a very special occasion for recording this episode show. I'm so happy to announce that we are celebrating our 25th anniversary this year. The past 25 years have been motivational and inspiring for the whole Sage team. We have been working really hard to meet your expectations and provide you with the best editorial service possible. I'm so proud of our professional editors who are experts in the admissions essay editing. With our team of highly experienced editors, our customers study at top universities and are given the opportunity of the best earning potential. Today's show is devoted to discussing the main questions our customers have. We will talk with our experts, our SH editors, to find the answers to these main queries. So, let's begin. I'm delighted to introduce Linda, who is a graduate of Stanford University with degrees in biology and communications, and a degree in MBA from the University of Southern California. Linda, you have been with SH for more than 20 years, I guess. What is your biggest insight after all these years of editing? Hi, Kate. Thanks for having me today. My name is Linda Reed. I've been an SAH editor for, gosh, at least about 20 years. Um, I've raised two boys here in Palos Verdes Estates, California, and live here with my husband. Um, my children are now in college and applying to graduate school themselves, and I first took the position as a great way to stay involved as a writer and an editor and raise my kids and have a flexible schedule. Um, you asked what I've learned uh, the most or what my biggest insight is. Um, as an editor over all this time, and I would say that really it's that SAH customers, they're a diverse group of students from all over the United States, from all over the world, and the, the one thing I want to stress to all of our clients is that there's a school or program for everyone. You don't need to chase a name, the top-ranked program, chase fit. Think about why you want to be at this specific place, why you want to study under this professor, where do you want to live, and you can succeed. I also feel that my role as an editor is to alleviate the stress my clients are under, whether it's stress about grammar, about writing in a second language, about whether their writing is clear, or how they can possibly fit an explanation of their lives into just 500 words. I've enjoyed my repeat customers over the years, students who've gone from undergraduate to graduate programs, students who I first meet through SA Edge as med school applicants who are now going on to residency and even fellowship. It's really fun to see their success and to see where their careers have taken them. Students share with us as editors their personalities, their fears, their hopes, and their goals. Uh, They also might share with us about their mental health problems, a chronic illness even. Um, Last month, uh, a law school applicant wrote about her abortion and about how reading about Brian Stevenson had led her to get her life together. Very personal stories. And this writing an essay about your life or about your goals or your statement of purpose is a very personal process and one that I take very seriously as an editor and I would encourage our clients to continue to be open to share their lives with the programs that they're applying to and great things will be out there for them. I'm always happy to communicate with my customers after I'm done editing and if they have any questions or anything about the work that I've done and I wish them all the best of luck. Thank you so much for having me today, Kate, and I look forward to hearing what the other editors have to say about SAH. Linda, thank you so much for all the work you do here at SAH. As for the other editors, I'm also interested in what they think, so let's move on to my second question. The next editor I'm honored to work with is Melissa, who has graduated from Columbia University and has been working for SAH for more than 13 years covering all genres of application and scholarship essays. Melissa, what do you like the most about editing? So there's two answers to why I love editing, and they parallel the answers I think customers should provide to the prompts they're writing for. There's the answer for why it's enjoyable for me, and the answer for why it's important to the larger world, in this case, my clients. For me, I love words and I love order. I take absolute delight in the nuances of language, the way different verb moods can convey very different levels of confidence, uh, the delicacy of adjectives and adverbs. At the same time, I'm a grammar freak, so fixing typos and misused words and mistakes made by people for whom English is not a first language is just viscerally satisfying. I will fix apostrophes on whiteboards, (laughs) that kind of thing. I 
have a lot of respect for the weight words carry and the craft of writing. So I enjoy untangling knots and creating echoes and parallel structure and making sure themes resonate throughout an essay. I appreciate it when I see it, and I'm proud of having the ability to make it happen. For my clients, I know that I'm helping them present their best selves in a very important context. I'm so often impressed by the work that grad school or professional school applicants have done already, or by the uh, insight and enthusiasm of high school students getting ready to launch. And I hope that in the work that I do with their essays and the comments I provide, I'm teaching them ways to think about communicating with particular audiences and about how their word choices work and giving them advice that will be useful long after they've gotten into whatever program they're applying to. For example, I hope that I'm teaching people to think about inclusive wording. When possible, I encourage people to take unnecessary gender markers out of their writing to avoid ableist language like confined to a wheelchair. Uh, these are examples of times when the specific vocabulary someone uses can completely change a reader's attitude towards what they're reading because it can make them feel excluded or belittled. And I want people to think about and appreciate the power of words and how the way they say something is just as important as the content they want to convey. I've been working for Essay Edge for over 15 years, and I've read a lot of essays that have very similar themes. Playing my sport has taught me the value of teamwork and persistence. Someone in my family had a traumatic medical event and that inspired me to become a doctor. Being an immigrant has taught me to adapt to new situations. But even so, each person has their own spin on what that experience means to them. And good editing can help them find the threads that are unique to them and make their story both honest and memorable. I ask a lot of questions when I write critiques because my goal is not to write your essay for you. I've already been to college and grad school. I haven't lived your life. I'm here to help you figure out what you really want to share with your admissions officers and what makes you stand out. A lot of times applicants are anxious to sound like what they think the ideal candidate in the abstract is, and they lose sight of their own motivations. The why of why people prioritize and value the things that they do and why they choose this particular way to answer an essay prompt is what is so much fun to get at with my questions and what makes an interesting essay for admissions officers to read. Editing is a creative act and it's collaborative. Melissa, thank you so much for being with us Edge and helping our clients improve their essays by providing professional advice and new insights on the essay that has already been written. Some applicants underestimate the power of a grammatically correct essay. Anna, who is a graduate of Yale University and has been with the Sage for more than 20 years, will help us understand why essays are so important in the application process. Anna, what do you think? Why is it so vital to have a perfectly crafted essay? Essays are so important to the application process because they are your opportunity to share your thoughts, your personality, and unique aspects of your life experiences that you wouldn't otherwise be able to share in other parts of your application. They're also where you can show your abilities to think critically about a given topic, to support your point of view, and to express yourself in a clear and organized fashion. A well-written essay can strengthen your entire application simply because it can showcase your skills and character in an engaging manner, bringing your name on the application to life for the admissions reader. Anna, thank you so much for all these significant points. I'm sure there is one common mistake that all the applicants make while preparing their essays. Mary, who has graduated from Stanford University and has edited thousands of essays, will share her experience in this question. Every writer has his or her own style. Each person has strengths and weaknesses. However, there are three problems that I see often. The first is wordiness, long-winded rambling. Sometimes people have an idea that seems so appealing we want to express it in three different ways with lots of ornamentation and unnecessary modifiers. This results in repetitive and even irritating writing. As Ernest Hemingway reminded us, Prose is architecture, not interior decoration, and the Baroque is over. The second common mistake is misuse of vocabulary. 
In the desire to sound sophisticated, we are tempted to use big words that are not appropriate to the context. For example, using simplistic instead of simple. Clichés also fall into this sad category. The third common problem is writing voice. In an application or proposal, it's good to sound confident, but not overconfident. Try to avoid too many first person pronouns, me, I, myself, or personal possessive pronouns, my or mine. Keep it neutral and modest. Those are the three problem areas I see most often. The good news is that they are easy to identify and fix. Mary, thank you so much for sharing your thoughts regarding this question. It goes without saying that it is always challenging to start something. This is related to essays as well. Valerie, who has graduated from Yale University, is a writer and editor and has been an SAH editor for more than 12 years. We'll guide us a little bit with the tips for a compelling and a catchy introduction. Hi, this is Valerie Steinberg. I've been editing with Essay Edge for 12 years. To answer the question about how to start writing an essay, I always like to encourage the applicant to think back to their own life story. And when they think about the defining milestones that make up their own history and their own sense of self and identity as they're stepping into this next stage in their life at this juncture when they're applying to this program. So I would encourage you to ask yourself, what are some exciting things that have happened to you in your life? And to get more specific, you know, it's different if you're applying to college versus applying to a specific program in grad school, um, because the more specific that you can hone in on, on where you're trying to frame yourself in the context for this admissions committee, the more you might be able to direct yourself to a specific story or anecdote or something that has happened to you in your life that you consider a defining moment, perhaps a moment that helped construct for yourself your own identity that you're utilizing in order to step into this next phase. So this should be a moment, perhaps it's it's an aha moment or an epiphany, something that, that happened to you that really changed your course, whether it was something that set you on this path to apply for this specific program, or it can be something more broad, but something that was character defining or something that really established for yourself that like you're this type of person or the type of person that would make decisions in this context in this way. And, and you know, that's sort of the thing that, that you know, I just sort of scan your your memory of a, of a fun story. And of course, the story, the more imagery, the better. You know, if there's something that really relates to a strong image, and that doesn't have to be a visual image, it can be an auditory or even a smell. Um, and so this is something that uh, you can utilize to open this essay with with a hook or something to immediately interest your reader. And, you know, if you start with this story, sometimes people say, oh, but everyone starts with stories. And, and I don't like that as an excuse. I think that that is true that that is a tool that often people use, but I think it's a tool for a reason. And you don't have to worry about it being cliche if you are specific, right? The more specific you are to your own story, the more it's not going to be replicable. It's not going to be something that anyone else could have ever said. So think about that story open your essay with a bang. And in terms of the absolute first sentence, if you're thinking about how to open this story, sometimes a line of dialogue or, you know, something that somebody said that really struck a chord with you, or alternately, it's something that you saw and just sort of describing exactly what's in front of you in the moment. You know, I often refer to this as in medias res, you know, when you begin an essay in medias res, in the middle of things, when you're you're, you're right in the action. And so when you open the curtains for the stage or when you open the scene in the movie, where are you standing? What is setting the scene for us? And paint that picture like in a cin- like a cinematic movie. Like you're telling a story in that way. So if you open your essay with that story, that's a really good grounding context from which to begin. And usually that's just going to be a regular size, short paragraph, you know, not too long, not too short. And when you get to that end of that paragraph, hopefully you've had time to tell that story in a concise way to explain, you know, where you are. If you started with a kind of puzzling, exciting phrase that might be a little bit confusing, quickly clarify any confusion. You know, it's, it's good to confuse right away as long as in the second sentence you, you alleviate any confusion. So we know where we are, we know who you are, we know what's going on. So by the time you get to the end of that first paragraph, you're really able to say, and this is why I'm here, right? So if it's a story that is directly related to where you're at, by the end of that paragraph, explain this is what drove me to this path, right? Or if it's a story that feels a little tangential, by the end of that paragraph, explain this is why it's related to what we're here to talk about today. 
And then you can proceed. And when you get into the second paragraph, you know, you can back up. If, if that story is something from your more recent past, maybe in your second paragraph, you back up to the earliest thing that's relevant chronologically and then proceed forward from there in, in explaining in a more factual way what you've been through in your life as relevant to the program you're applying for. If it's something that was a story from your childhood that you've opened with, then maybe that's the earliest thing you're going to talk about and proceed forward chronologically from there. What happened next? How did you get to where you are today after that story from long ago? So that's just a little bit of fuel for getting you started on your essay and hopefully you found that helpful. Good luck. Valerie, thank you so much for uh, this step-by-step guide for writing a good and compelling essay. This was very informative. Thank you. And my last question is forwarded to Susan, who has graduated from Harvard University and has been working as a freelance writer and editor for the last 20 years. Susan, what is your suggestion to all the applicants who do not have any idea on how to write your essays? So first of all, think about the question and what it is asking. There are a lot of different kinds of questions, but think about the question you're trying to answer. Brainstorm potential answers to it. Write down all your thoughts, messy, unconnected, sometimes just simple words and phrases. It doesn't have to start out as a full-fledged essay. Just start with some ideas. Think about what story you want to tell to the person who will be reading the essay. Many of the prompts are about your life to date, your current and future interests, you know, and what they want to know is like, what is the connection? What's the story? How did you become interested in what you're interested in now? What was the process? What experiences did you have along the way? Where could you see this taking you in the future? I mean, it's, it's a story. Think of it. Think about it as a story that you're telling out loud to a friend to describe exactly how you got to where you are at this moment and where you're hoping to go from here. Write a lot and write without judgment. I honestly think the best essays you start out with two or three times as much material as you end up using, because then you can edit it down to the good stuff. Notice how the writing is going, what's easy to write, what feels fun, what inspires you. How you write, the attitude you have while you're writing will come through in the essay, as will boredom. Just let ideas flow. Don't worry about organization at the beginning. See where it takes you and see what parts of it are easier than you thought and where you have more things to say than you thought when you first sat down to the blank page. If you're someone who likes blueprints or maps, make a very detailed outline to begin. Keep adding to the outline to organize your thoughts. And you can outline even the shortest essays or the very long ones and move things around in whatever way works for you. And when all else fails, think about the five paragraph essay that you learned in elementary school. Think of three ideas that can be, that could somehow be linked together to answer the prompt, then come up with an introduction for them and a conclusion. Once you start writing within that structure, you don't need to stay to five paragraphs. Some thoughts may take two or three paragraphs, some just one. You'll see the introduction may take two paragraphs. It may pull in other themes, but start with a basic structure and then Put your ideas on them, on it, and move them around and see how that comes out. Sometimes structure is what you need to provide you the comfort and the space to really just brainstorm. Susan, thank you so much for sharing your thoughts and ideas on how to craft a good essay. Thank you. Dear friends, if you need any editorial assistance with your document, now you know that SH can help you with crafting your impeccable admissions essay. And as we are celebrating our anniversary, I have a fantastic offer for you. Use the promo code Anniversary Edge and get a $25 discount on your order with SH. Thank you for being with us and have a good one. <laughs>